A tank holds 1,000 gallons of water, which drains from the bottom of the tank in half an hour. The values in the table show the volume of V of water remaining in the tank in gallons after T minutes. If P is the point 15, 250 on the graph of V, find the slopes of the secant lines PQ when Q is the point on the graph with time 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. So in this example, we're going to be using this equation. If you were watching my other videos, you'd be familiar with this. This is the slope of a secant line. And so that's what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the slopes of the secant lines to approximate the slope of the tangent line. And so our equation is read as following. QV minus PV divided by QT minus PT. And so V stands for the volume and T stands for time we're given the point P 15 comma 250 and so with this point we know that this points go in here and there for all of our secant lengths so this is the same as the rise over the run and so let's do an example right here so 15 and 250 250 goes on top because that's the value and 15 goes on the bottom because that's our time and we're going to subtract this with that because with the chart from the chart we have 5 and 694 in time and value in gallons so let's see right here so now all we got to do is subtractions and division. So 694 minus 250 equals 444. 5 minus 15 equals negative 10. And that ends up equaling negative 44.4. And that's our average velocity. All right. So now let's take a look at our other secant lines. So here's one of our slopes of the secant lines. It's going to be 444 minus 250 divided by 10 minus 15, which equals 194 divided by negative 5 equals negative 38.8 meters per second. And earlier I didn't mention that you got to make sure you write it all these in meters per second because this is our average velocity. And right here we have our other secant line, slope of the secant line, 111 minus 250 divided by 20 minus 15, which equals negative 139 divided by 5, which equals 27.8 meters per second. And then right here we have our third slope of the secant line, which equals 28 minus 250 divided by 25 minus 15, which equals negative 222 divided by 10 which equals negative 22.2 meters per second. And then here's a, another one. We have our slope of the secant line from P to Q, which equals 0 minus 250 divided by 30 minus 15, which equals negative 250 divided by 15, which equals negative 10.66 meters per second. Estimate the slope of the tangent line at P by averaging the slopes of the two secant line of two secant lines. And Let's take a look at our averages again. So let's go back here. So we have an average of 38.8 and 27.8. And so we just want to get the averages closest to the number 15, right? Because this is our initial point. And we want to take the average closest to the initial point. So we can say this one. And we can say this one because they're pretty close to number 15. The point 15 and 250, my bad. So let's go back over here. And so here's our average. All we got to do is 
add these together. So that's negative 38.8 plus negative 27.8 and then divide it by 2. And this gives us an approximation of what we think the tangent line is for P. And so if you look at the graph down here, we're going to have a tangent line. Let's see. Use this color. We have a tangent line touching P like that. Use a graph of the function to estimate the slope of the tangent line at P. This slope represents the rate at which the water is flowing from the tank after 15 minutes. So let's see. We have a triangle right here. This is how we're going to try to solve the problem. And we're going to do the slope, which is, is the rise or the run, right? And AB represents the sides. So over right here, we have A and B. That's one side. Over here, we got B and C. That's two sides. So now we identified which side is which. This is the AB side. Here's the BC side. We just need to figure out where are these numbers coming from. We remember that if we remember the graph. I mean, we remember the tables of values. We remember that this is 444. And we'll remember that this is 111. C is. And so we know, we understand where our, these numbers are coming from because these are the, our numbers for volume. And these are our numbers for time. If we're doing a rise over the run, we understand that this value right here is 444. And we're subtracting 444 from 111 from this, from that. And 5, I mean 10, and 20. So we got to understand that at this point, a given time, where it's 444, it's going to be the time 10. But we're, try we're trying to subtract the, t the time right here, 20 minus 10, because that's higher. So now we understand that. Now we, all we have to do is, is the math. So 444 minus 111, 20 minus 10, 333 divided by 10, and that ends up equaling 33.3 and meters per second. And this would be our instantaneous velocity. Thank you guys for watching this video, and if you have any questions or comments please leave a comment down below and if you like the video please like and subscribe and let me know about any future content you